Welcome back to Wretched Oodles. That's a lot of New Testament manuscripts, but also oodles of variants. Can you trust this book? 99% of all variants I could not even explain to you in the English language because they do not impact the meaning or translation of the text. They have to do, for example, with word order. And in the Greek language, word order is very different than it is in English. It has been well said that there are about 16 different ways that you could write something like uh, uh, Paul loves the church or, or Jesus loves his people in the Greek language as far as word order and utilization of different cases and tenses and all sorts of things like that. And so when you have variations along those lines that cannot be translated into other languages, then they're not impacting the actual meaning of the text itself. But what's more is there's all sorts of spelling issues. For example, uh, I remember when I took first year Greek, one of the students in, a, in, in the Greek class we had really struggled with the concept of the movable new. The movable new is just basically the same thing as we have in English. You're not supposed to say a apple. You're supposed to say an apple. You're supposed to put that extra n in there when you have a word starting with a vowel afterwards, right? Well, some people don't quite get that, and some scribes didn't quite get that. And the same thing is true in Greek as well. And that is that there are those words. You're supposed to have the movable new. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. That accounts for literally thousands of variants of that 400,000. And so 99% of them are simply inconsequential. They do not uh, in any way impact the meaning of the text. So 1% of 400,000 is about 4,000 meaningful textual variants out of 138,162 words. It's about 2.9% or one meaningful variant every three pages. But only about half of these are viable. What does viable mean? Well, if you had a scribe who got up one morning and um, he didn't have his coffee and he stepped on his cat on the way out to the scriptorium and um, uh, he forgot his glasses. Well, okay, let's not use glasses. That's a little bit anachronistic. But uh, he's having a bad day and so he's not paying attention to what he's copying. And so in the process of copying a manuscript, his mind wanders and he, he comes up with a reading that no one's ever seen before. And this is in the 14th century. If you find one manuscript in the 14th century, it has a reading that no one's ever seen before. It's not viable. That means it doesn't go back to the early period. It could not be the original reading. In fact, we have one manuscript where one, <laughs> one scribe had a really bad day uh, because the text he was copying was written in two columns but he forgot it was written in two columns. And so he just copied straight across and it was in the genealogy of Jesus. And it really becomes weird because then God ends up with a father named Pharez and it's really, really strange. And this guy somehow didn't even notice this. I don't know how that happened, but we still have the manuscript. We still have the evidence that there were scribes who sometimes just were not really aware of what in the world was going on. And so that could happen. So only about half or a little less than half of these are viable. They, they actually go back far enough, they have enough manuscript evidence behind them that they could possibly represent the original. So that comes up with about 1,500 to 2,000 viable New Testament textual variants. That is a very, very different picture than what we were given before when you talk about 400,000 variants and more variants than there are words and all the rest of that kind of stuff. We're talking about 1,500 to 2,000 instead. Now, we still need to understand that. Simple fact, the more manuscripts you have for a work of antiquity, the more variants you're gonna have. Think about it. If you only have one manuscript, how many variants do you have? None. Now, a lot of us would sort of like if that's the way it was. No manuscripts at all. Just, we, just, we have the one master manuscript. What's the real problem with that? You have to trust that whoever made that one manuscript got it absolutely right. And if you don't have anything else, if you don't have anything to check that by, you've got no way to get back to the original. You have no way of testing whether that one scribe was having a bad day or not. So having just one manuscript, bad thing. For any work of antiquity, the more manuscripts you have that you can compare the better off you are and the better certainty you have of the 
of still possessing the original readings. But the downside to that is the more manuscripts you have, the more variants you have. So while we have a large number of variants, it's just because the New Testament has more manuscripts than any other work of antiquity at all. So it's just a logical thing. I really struggle. Uh, I, I try to explain this to my Muslim friends because they think, well, I've got the Quran and there's no variants. Well, there actually are. They're just not aware of them. And, uh, it, you know, we've all got one Arabic text and we can all look at one Arabic text and that's superior to what you have. But the reality is it isn't. That's not superior. It's actually an inferior transmission methodology to what we have in the New Testament. And so think about it. If there are more than 5,700 catalog manuscripts of the New Testament, the average length of which is at least on the low end 200 pages, it could be as much as 400 pages depending on how you count pages, that's at least at the very, very low end 1.3 million pages of text and some would say upwards to 3 million pages of handwritten text. That's a lot of pages of text. Now when you think about it, 1,500 to 2,000 meaningful and viable variants over minimally 1.3 million pages of hand-copied text spanning approximately 1,500 years prior to the invention of printing is an amazingly small percentage of the text reflecting an amazingly accurate transmission of the text. In fact, one might almost call it downright miraculous. Yeah. Yeah, I think miraculous would be the correct word. Get your copy of A New Testament Reliability available at Wretched.tv. You will never doubt the reliability of this book ever again.